So we're going to have a quick look now at the Heinrich Schütz Zeely Sinti Torten, um, and then we'll play a video which I found um, by the Cambridge Singers, um, which is nice because it's got a, a score, so you can actually follow along. Um, so you can never get too lost because you'll never be more than about six or eight bars out. Um, so um, that's that's very beautiful, and it's uh, performed in the way that we were going to do it um, uh, with with chamber organ only. Um, as it says in the back of the uh, European Sacred Book, which I know a lot of you have now not got, um, it was actually approved by um, Schutz for, uh, he said you could perform it either with uh, instruments or without, with organ or without. What's quite interesting about a lot of Schutz's work, he was known um, very much to be influenced very strongly by uh, Gabrielli, and you can see that in a lot of his works, I think some of you are familiar with Psalm 100, which is for two antiphonal choirs. So we've got very much this kind of, um, like a Venetian influence with the Cori Spezzati, the kind of um, families of either choirs or instruments. And that could be placed maybe in two galleries in the church. There's very much that kind of feeling of um, two things that I think is interesting about that. One is how, um, there's this spatial contrast. Um, he's potentially using different bits of the building and that was something certainly we were going to explore um, in St Cross. Um, but the other thing which I think is interesting is that he, he doesn't always specify in a lot of his pieces whether the choirs should be of, of voices or instruments or some combination of the two. Um, and perhaps that's left to the flexibility of the performers and the availability of instruments and singers. And um, it's a bit of a puzzle sometimes, um, uh, a lot, and this applies to Gabrielli as well, that we don't really know in a lot of his uh, motets and, and other compositions, which, which choirs were supposed to be voices and which were supposed to be instruments. And um, sometimes he, he makes it clear, but often, often not. And it's only by the fact that either they're ridiculously high or ridiculously low that we know that it couldn't possibly be sung. Um, but this piece is slightly different from those kind of things, written for continuo organ and, and um, six-part choir. Um, it's a beautiful opening. Um, uh, Zeely Cindy Torton, very, very static. What I think is interesting and also uh, shows Gabrielli's understanding of writing for a big acoustic um, is that there's rhythmic interest, but often the harmony is very, very uh, static. The same chord will go on for several bars. So we notice that he doesn't change the chord until bar four. It's all G major. first time the harmony changes and even when the rhythm gets more complicated um, so this is bar um, 13 it's really he's adding rhythmic interest but not um, harmonic complexity so we've got the same kind of idea and that uh, will work in a big acoustic um, because the harmonic um, you'll, you'll hear the, the consonants coming through with those rhythmic ideas, but the harmony is still nice and clear and doesn't get muddy because it's not too fast changing. That harmonic progression in bar 13 is exactly the same as the beginning. And then of course he then starts to move in a different direction. So later on in the piece, um, there's slight fluctuation between a more polyphonic style, like the words die in dem Herren sterben, when he moves away from having everybody singing at once to having um, groups, um, sort of not really polyphony uh, with all the, all the voices taking an equal part, but he's using groups of voices. So that continues in that vein. And really, he's um, using rhythm a lot. When when the piece starts getting um, more agitated and excited on the words, Ja, der Geist spricht, which we worked a lot about those, those lovely consonants. Um, 
and I don't think Cambridge singers are quite as good at us on our text, um, but we'll forgive them. Um, you get this rhythmic idea with this uh, rhythmic um, interest, especially in the in the third part down. So we get um, the tenors start off with ya. Yeah. And that then subsides. And he moves back then in Ziruun, uh, where again he's talking about being at rest, um, to this very static harmony. And again, you need to think about how that will be in a, in a big, um, big acoustic. Then the tenors start Und ihre Werke, and again there's more rhythmic interest. Um, but in a way the harmony is quite simple, the chords um, just making a, a simple kind of rocking feeling. So we're kind of basically working between G major and D major with the odd um, A major thrown in. So as everybody knows in pop songs you can write uh, a load of pop songs with uh, four chords or even three chords, so Schutz is kind of, um, nothing changes, he's managing to make lots of interest there um, from just a few chords. Um, then again we have his use on Zyruen where the tenors and basses have this, where it goes like this, and then the sopranos and altos answer. Again we've got this idea of two groups of voices, almost like a um, a double choir sort of effect. And again, that will be not, not in, a, in it's not Cori Spezzati, this will be for one choir, probably in one place. Um, but he's still making that kind of musical contrast and the contrast between high and low. And then at the end of the piece, you have this lovely um, scale coming down, which the basses um, and then the top soprano part, uh, and there's then the second soprano part, brings us to a close. You get this kind of ideal, this, this kind of piece talking about death. Um, there's often this kind of sense of inexorability with the scale going downwards, which is often a symbol for, for death. So that's the basses, um, seven bars before the end. And then the basses at the end. And then the sopranos do the same thing. The first sopranos have. And there's this wonderful effect. That's one of the highest notes of the whole piece. And then you get this idea with the, the bass part, get this, this idea. And then the two soprano parts have this, this walking scale. So do have a sing-along now with this uh, recording by the Cambridge Singers and I'll see you in a minute.